My professor of mathematics used to say that this solution is great, but useless. And it's pretty much the same with counter-rotating props on pair motors. Stay with me and I'll explain why. This is part 12 of the insights into paramotor geometry. Please make sure you have watched the previous video. <laughs> Hello, Miro! Where are you going? Huh? Let's start with why the counter-rotating props are so great. In fact, counter-rotating props are the ideal solution to fight torque because torque is a force acting in the opposite direction of the spinning prop. But now when you have two props, two torques fighting each other, compensating perfectly. And the good thing that both torques act on the same laws on physics. And in fact, counter-rotating props are the only solution that can perfectly compensate acceleration torque and torque during constant RPM flight. Absolute most beautiful flight ever had. It was awesome. So now let's start with the disadvantages. First, the whole mechanism of counter-rotating shafts is heavy, which is obviously a big disadvantage to our paramotors. Secondly, the shaft is expensive. It's a complicated system. It's expensive and it's another thing to fail in the air. There is also one thing you will feel, you will feel immediately as well, is the slow throttle response. Simply, if you have twice as much propeller on your back, you need twice as much energy to start it spinning, to accelerate the prop. Now, if you don't have twice as much energy, this means it will take twice as much time to reach the higher RPM. So the throttle response would be less responsive, or you will have to wait to, for the power delivery. A spinning prop, just like any other spinning object, wants to remain stable, hesitates to change its position, just like the spinning toy that you, that you used to play with. You can actually feel it in the air when you initiate a turn, and for a little moment, that, that pair motor sort of hesitates to follow you, like it would want to continue in the same, in the original direction. Now, with two spinning props on your back, it would hesitate even more. This would definitely affect your handling. Last but not least, you're sacrificing safety with counter-rotating propellers simply because the second prop needs to be positioned way back just to avoid interference with the first prop. This will definitely increase the risk of cutting your lines or hitting the ground with the prop on takeoff and landing. Yeah, Miro! Yeah, Miro! While the counter-rotating props are the ideal way to compensate torque, they are heavy, they are expensive, they are unresponsive, lazy in handling and unsafe. This is why we don't happen to see them in real life installed on paramotors. I'm a big fan of innovation, so please, if there is someone who could fix all these disadvantages, please do so. That would be the best paramotor ever. Until then, we will have to be satisfied with other means of compensating torque and this is what I want to talk about in the next videos. Recently I've noticed a new prototype that instead of using two counter-rotating props rotating one behind the other, they used four electric engines and the props were placed next to each other. I haven't flown this one, it looks really promising, my only concern would be losing efficiency because a larger prop is always more efficient than a small prop but yet time will have to prove this concept what an amazing sport you can come out here land in literally in the middle of nowhere i have to say that this right here is what it's all about until then let's talk about other ways of compensating torque this will be covered in my next videos so stay with us hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so yet Please feel free to have questions, leave a comment. Thanks for watching, thanks for sharing, and see you soon.